what I want to do next is go through a specific example that will help us understand how to apply this. And we're not going to be able to cover every single scenario in the last uh, flow diagram, but we're going to uh, cover much of it. And it gives an, an illustration of how this uh, procedure works. So the example that I came up with was a four variable problem where we're trying to maximize an objective. Uh, and that objective has the cost function shown here. Uh, x1 plus 1.25 x2 plus 1.9 x3 plus 0.85 x4. And it's subject to three constraints. Um, those constraints involve subsets of the variables in each case. Um, and you can kind of tell by looking at this that the solution to this is, is probably not going to perfectly align with the integer with, with integer values of the variables, right? If you were to solve this problem using continuous variables, the values x1 through x4 would probably take a non-integer uh, non value in the optimal solution. However, we're requiring in this problem that all the variables do take on an integral value. So we'll see how this all pans out in the end. So let's walk through the process. Again, I've got on the, uh, on the left-hand side the reference flow chart. On the upper right, you see I'm going to keep track of our current incumbent uh, solution objective function value. So this is the best integer valued solution that we've identified so far. Uh, also present are two metrics that we're going to care about or help to, to judge progress in solving this problem. The first is called the upper bound, and the second is called the gap or the MIP gap, the mixed integer program gap. The upper bound, uh, because we're maximizing, uh, the upper bound represents the uh, best solution that we have so far on any node that hasn't been fully resolved. Okay, so that can include any, uh, you know, any relaxed or partially relaxed solution. But if uh, both subproblems from that node have been fully resolved, um, then uh, we have to use one of the subproblem objective values. So we'll see how that that works in the end. The gap is actually the fractional difference or the relative difference between the incumbent solution and the upper bound. So often you actually hear uh, these called lower bound and upper bound. So Z star is sometimes referred to as the lower bound, uh, where Z is the upper bound. And if you're minimizing these two reverse, right, the lower bound becomes the best uh, relaxed solution while the upper bound is your incumbent solution. Okay. So the first thing we do is we initialize our z star to uh, minus infinity as we've done, and then we need to uh, solve the relaxed subproblem. So our first node in this branch and bound tree is our relaxed subproblem. We're allowing all the integer variables to take any continuous value that they want, and we're solving to maximize uh, the objective. Uh, we do that, and we get back our solution, uh, which has the values uh, given for x, uh, and then the objective solution is 12.25. So we know from doing this that the best possible solution that we could ever get is 12.25, right? Anytime you add constraints to a problem, as, as is the case when you force a continuous variable to become an integer var variable, um, you're adding a constraint. Anytime you add a constraint to the problem, the problem has to get no better and probably will get a little bit worse in terms of its objective. So uh, here you'll see that this is the relaxed solution. This is the best possible solution we could, we could hope to get. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a non-integer valued variable. So here we've chosen 8.4. This is x1. Uh, that is a variable whose value in the solution is not an integer. So we wouldn't want to choose the second uh, x2 because that already is an integer. We want to force this solution to consider integer values that bound this, uh, the one that we've selected. So we select our non-integer valued variable. In this case, we're choosing the x1, which is, uh, has a value of 8.4. And then we're going to create uh, two integer subproblems from this. The first subproblem requires, uh, enforces the constraint that uh, the first integer variable uh, be less than or equal to 8. We're adding an additional constraint that forces the best solution to be on the integer bound on the lower end. And then we have a second subproblem that forces the integer bound to be on the upper end, uh, greater than or equal to 9. 
So then uh, we move forward by uh, choosing a subproblem and solving it. And we solve this subproblem using the sim simplex method in the same way that we normally would for a linear problem. Um, and we do that for, for both of them. So the first, you can see that uh, node 2 has an a optimal value of 12.04. Uh, while well, node 3 is actually unfeasible or in, infeasible, right? There is no, there's no uh, feasible solution that involves x greater than or equal to 9, x1 greater than or equal to 9. All right, so uh, we note that we've also now fully explored this first subproblem we have, uh, uh, the nodes 2 and node 3 fully explored, and there's no other possible better solution now than 12.04. So we update our upper bound to be 12.04. We will note that actually we don't have any incumbent solution. We don't have a solution yet that involves just integer values. Uh, so our, our incumbent remains at the initialized value, which is minus infinity. Um, so the next step is we need to look at our uh, fathoming criteria and decide which of these branches we can fathom and get rid of. Uh, so let's refer back to the criteria that we uh, I uh, discussed earlier. The three cr criteria are here. We're, first, we have uh, all integer variables have integer values. Um, for subproblem two, that's not the case. You see that the, the solution has 0 0.2, 0 0.3, right? There's uh, uh, values in between the integer values now, and so that doesn't qualify. Uh, the second criteria is that the problem's infeasible. For subproblem two, this is a feasible solution. However, node 3 is infeasible, so by criteria 2, we can, in fact, fathom node 3, and there's no further exploration there. Uh, criteria 3, the objective is worse than the incumbent solution. We don't have an incumbent solution, um, so we don't have to worry about that yet.